welcome to Pocus Geek. Uh, in the next few videos, we're going to review the algorithms for working up DVT in patients from low, moderate to high risk patients. If you haven't had a chance to watch how to perform this study, I'd recommend doing that at some time. I'll put a link for that at the end of this video. But I'm going to review uh, according to some guidelines that I've tried to summarize um, to make them a little more. Uh, user friendly for us when we're using point of care ultrasound at the bedside and how I incorporate them. Um, these are following guidelines from the chest from chest and also from uh, NICE. So let's look here. So initially <clears throat> we have to calculate a well score. I'm not going to read through these. If you'd like go ahead and hit pause on the video uh, so you can read through them but essentially you get one point for everything and then you get negative two points if you have a more like, likely diagnosis. And then we're going to come around and we're going to start evaluating the different um, risk factors. So we end up in a low, moderate, or high risk group. There are some that just use a uh, low and high risk group. And in this case, we're going to discuss all three. So we're going to discuss first what we do with a low risk, lower extremity DVT patient. So they present, you know, maybe that's a young, healthy person. They have no really uh, medical problems, no family history. None of your, your well score ends up being negative two to zero. And you're still concerned about a DVT. So the first thing that they recommend in the guidelines is to do a moderate or high sensitivity D-dimer. In this case, you can do moderate. Um, in your later moderate to high risk patients, we cannot. But we can get a moderate uh, sensitivity D-dimer. And if that test is negative, we have a really low risk of this patient having a DVT. And you don't need to evaluate them any further for a DVT. Pretest probability becomes extremely low, and it's unlikely they have a DVT. So what if it is positive? Well, if it's positive, then we're going to move to a proximal vein compression ultrasound. And when we move to that proximal vein compression ultrasound, if it's positive, simple, right? We're going to treat that uh, DVT that's in the in our uh, venous system, proximal to either in the popliteal or proximal to it, um, with whatever anticoagulation um, is appropriate. Now, if it's negative, then we're done as far as evaluating this patient for a DVT. So once again, they have a positive D-dimer but a negative proximal vein compression ultrasound, and there's no further eva necessary evaluation for DVT per the guidelines. Additionally, though, they say that also you could complete a proximal vein compression ultrasound. Now, this is an alternate pathway, but it's also acceptable. And so again, if it's positive, we're going to treat for a DVT, and if it's negative, then we are not. So how do I do it in the ED? Well, you know, we're all uh, under time constraints in our emergency departments. So I'm fast at getting this done. I'm, I do it well, um, and I'm accurate. I've done enough experience with, or had enough experience with it that I jump to a proximal vein compression ultrasound. And if they're positive, I treat. And if they're not, then I don't recommend follow-up for evaluation of DVT. I may examine you know or test for other things or have them follow up with their PCP but as far as a proximal vein uh, ultrasound that's not necessary so I'm just going to give you that algorithm here uh, you can go ahead and capture it on your screen if you need it or um, if I can I'll put a PDF link I'm not sure if that's possible to this um, but that gives you a chance to understand how we can work up low risk uh, patients for lower extremity DVT in ending, I do want to say you can complete a whole leg ultrasound. Um, that is not recommended in this group per the chest guidelines. In fact, it's not recommended in any group. Um, but they do say if you have a negative whole leg ultrasound, then you're complete. You're done with your evaluation. Um, and that would be appropriate for this group, uh, just the same. I hope that you found that topic useful. If you have questions about it or other related point of care ultrasound questions, feel free to email me at pocusgeek at gmail.com or comment below. Also, subscribe to this channel to get updates on this topic or other point of care ultrasound related subjects.